I'm just worried about one thing. What? We like S2G Giraffe. Maybe Zuno and Zenith has a chance. Maybe they do. N37 proved us wrong, though. So for the people who tried to, you know, pick the opposite of what we predict, to, uh, we were very, very sorry. We, we thought, you know, just after stop game listening one, to us. Just stop in, listening just to us. You know, make listening. your own decisions. But even then, it might be wrong too. And now we're jumping straight into game. It's gonna be SDG going up against Zeno Zenith. Where again, we're looking at a comp that has a lot of damage going up against a comp that's trying to protect the president. I gotta say, this pre president is gonna be hard to protect. Very hard, man. There's so many ways. So many angles of attack as well, coming in from S2G, even in lane. I don't think Zippy will have a good time, but at least for Siggy Boom, we do have data um, for game number one. It did feel like Siggy Boom was struggling to find uh, the, the ways to basic attack and to bully the Moskov game one. Two things I want to shout out. First of all, Shocker is using the MSC skin. Very cool. Grab the MSC skin, guys. And Zippy is using the uh, Purify, so... This is very good for Nolan. This is very good for uh, the Grok as well as Siggy Bum on the uh, on the Harif. Mm -hmm. Making it so that your HP is low. What are you going to do? Flicker? <laughs> nice joke. <laughs> that's, that's pretty that's true. That's heh heh That's heh heh he. And we have seen that for a lot of times. Siggy Bum doing a bit of damage there over to Zippy. Punishing him for walking up to go for the gold uh, cannon minion there. But it does look like he's also on the Impure Rage, not the War Cry, uh, LaFell. Mm. And Zippy, very safe option, goes for the Quantum Charge, not the weakness finder that we know. Because Zoo tried to go for the Retree there, but it's Joe who retries first, takes it away. And in the mid lane, as expected, the Pryo, because Zoo walking up, goes in for the Fracture too. And it's going to be an arc taken very, very low. 17 seconds on the turtle and counting. Something that we do have to say, usually we see the Nolan abusing his fast clear speed to get a very clear advantage against the opposing jungler. But in terms of the levels, it looks like there's no there's no difference between uh, Kazoo uh, using the Nolan going up against Joe that's using the Fredrin. So he's not really achieving what the Nolan is supposed to achieve. Mm -hmm. Still a level lead though, the Kazoo has gotten over here. Not gonna go for the neutral objective, actually gonna go and look for a trade over to the purple buff. Nart spots it out, Shocker instantly rotating towards the bottom side there. As Nolan tries to go for the purple buff, but will not be able to do so. Giving over a free turtle, and there are no trades on the board for S2G. Very good map signs coming in from Denard, but again, this is this is the worry, right? S2G has a comp that can go very aggressive, but so far they're not being aggressive, and the fact that the Hive is not winning hard on the lane, this, if, if they don't pick up the pace, Zeno Zenith is going to be very comfortable. It's like, we want to scale up. If no one's going to stop us scaling up, then we're all good, man. This is this is the kind of game that we want. Yeah, for S2G, this is not the game that they want. They want to force the pace, look for skirmishes around the map, but so far that hasn't happened at all. They're the ones to actually evade away from a skirmish earlier. Goes to the purple buff, and he wasn't even able to get it. Now not even going for the invade, Joe will be able to pick up the purple buff. And the fact that the Fredrin is the same level, that's an implosion right into the shove back, but it's going to be caught by the wild charge on that barrier. First blood to begin, and that was going to be Siggy Boom, who gets caught and gets taken out by Shocker. Can I say that's not what you want to see if you're an S2G fan? Because this is the kind of game that, oh, before that, hey, hey, goes in, and he gets begin. So overall, perfect trade for Xeno Zenith. And there's nothing that they can do on the other side of the map. Zippy just faces out and now clears up the wave. Natan scaling. Lunar getting some gold, but on this Ruby, she does get a War Axe. That's a power spike. That is a power spike, but we talked about this, how we really like S2G's draft. So Xeno Zenith has a chance, and they have a chance right now because Zippy is going to get his first item relatively uncontested. And again, this is the kind of game where you want to see the Grok Flicker, wild charge into two people, and then having the Nolan following up with a fracture gets gets a double kill instantly. But we, we're not seeing that. Siggy Bum, I feel like he's playing a little bit too passively as a, as a Way too here. passive. We got to look at the replay here where, again, the engage, they use everything onto Gnar, which is fine. But Shocker was actually the one using the Grok all using the wild charge to turn things around. The amount of damage is big, and Begin was too close to the... Uh, mid lane bush, which is something that you really have to be careful of. You want to use your skills to find oh. out, but before that, Gnar gets taken down. Not able to go for the implosion. That's a two-man. I'm offended. Right into the wild charge. Stolen away by Shocker. That was going to be the penalty zone. Locking him down. Lunar going to be taken out. Joe walking forward, getting the taunt. Appraisers right on the begin. Very low. Shocker, one last shot is all he needs, but he will decide to play it safe. They have the prio over this mid lane in the bottom lane. We finally do see Sigibum utilizes 
uh, utilizing this early lead. Kazoo walking up, going up, Joe getting the up, but not able to go for the taunt. Kazoo with the Fracture Shocker flickering out of it. And Hehe will be able to chase him down, zoning him away from this turtle to go to Xeno Zenith. Yeah, and now the turtle being there, Shocker as well is doing very well. He has the glowing wand, so a lot of damage is going to be, be be held. And now he can actually deal with Sigabum because the, the shield is going to be lower. And, and the Taunt is winning against the Hari. Mm hmm. Something you all want to see. I'm offended right into the battle. Begin. Gets a Mystic Gush as well. It's still going to be Joe surviving for a bit, but Kazoo gets him down, picks up the purple buff too. Xeno Zenith, it's 3-3. Three to three. And interestingly enough, it's still S2G who hold on to the gold lead despite the two turtles. We got to see where the lead is at because I feel like he's on Lunar. And now ZP is very, very low. They can get this kill. No while charge. Karo goes in. Implosion to catch him down. Zippy able to escape. The last turret shot won't be able to take Karo down and begin. Looks for the kill under the turret. Throws out the Mystic Projectile into the bush. Doesn't find him. He's recalling all the way into tier 2. And it seems for S2G, they're trying to push the pace now in the bottom lane. Looking at the items here, looks like the Fresden has not completed a single item yet. He just wants the uh, the second tier items. And the Nolan having the Hunt Strike as well as Sky, uh, Sky Piercer. He should be doing well at this point. But again, in terms of the kills, he's not been getting a lot. He's getting two, which is okay. But I feel like he really should pick up the pace. Mm -hmm. Joe wasn't able to go for his orange buff, by the way. That was a good invade by Kazoo. Six minutes in, now it's the first Successful invade so far for S2G as they continue into this mid lane. But they're playing towards that mid lane. Hehe. <laughs> look for an angle. It does seem like for Lunar, he will be able to find the arm offended right into the wall charge and the fracture, but it's onto a Terizla. Hehe. <laughs> Going to be the one with the last laugh there. How do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> there you go. It's unfortunate they use their engage tools to disengage. So S2G, they're utilizing this draft not the way that we thought it would be utilized, where you would use your tools to initiate a fight and then grabbing the kills, giving it over to your carries. The, the Nolan as well, the Harry, especially because you have the Sky Piercer now on the Nolan, but it looks like they have a different idea. They want some kind of power spike before they go in. Uh, damage placed down at the Hehe, but still damage reduction with the passive there, able to escape. Meanwhile, no some on force there. I'm offended, able to bring Gnart in, but Implosion will be able to find it. Now it's gonna be begin who finds the kill, but okay, Shocker jumps with the wild charge, and now it's gonna be the Implosion again. Oh, Ready, doing so much damage onto the back Lunar, forcing going for the Flicker onto Hehe, but will still be able to survive with the Body Smith. And that's another win for Xeno Zenith around the turtle. That makes it three neutral objectives. Three neutral objectives, and now ZP has two items. Right? All he's waiting for is the Holy Crystal. Once the Holy Crystal is built, it's going to be difficult for S2G because it looks like Kazoo does not have a lot of opportunities to go on to Zippy because Gnar has his eyes on this Natan, making sure that the Natan is able to survive any kind of engage. Same as Shocker. Shocker can go very aggressive and deal the damage, but every once in a while, he can dash back to his own carries. Because Look at this. Kazoo is going to try to kill him. Fracture as well. Zippy, whoa! Gets out with the Entropy. Good reaction time to stop that from happening. And now they'll still be able to pick up a tier one down below while also scaling up. Yeah, and again, he has two items. After this, he's going to have the Holy Crystal. And I kind of feel like with the threat of Kazoo, even though he was able to survive, perhaps having the Blood Wings would, helping out, uh, would help him out a lot. Shocker now having the Enchanted Talisman is going to be able to spam his skills a little bit more. So a lot more terrifies, a lot more damage, a lot more healing for himself and trying to stop S2G esports. Because at this point, S2G, their, their, their engagers are not engaging. Mm-hmm, Karo, oh, that's a shove over, but he still has that power of nature to get out. Some anti-CC as you know, Zenith pushes down in the bottom lane. Because Kazoo does get the Melfic Roar, by the way, so it's still pretty good for S2G. They are also technically scaling into the mid game. And now Shocker going in, that's an Impulsion Flicker combo by Nart, now shoving him back all the way for Zippy to take the kill with the Entropy. Kazoo up top trying to go for a trade and will be able to go for that trade, but it's only a tier one traded in for Lunar. Yeah, like any kind of advantage you would want to get it. It's just that STG, I kind of feel like they 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 missed their window. And now Joe is getting attacked, but it looks like he's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Same as Gnart. Shoves out, just dashes through, and Shocker steals away the wild charge too. Mystic Gush being used up in the mid lane to go and clear out the waves. And it does seem like for Xeno Zenith, they will utilize that resource being wasted in the mid lane by going for the Lord. You start that ticking time bomb now as the Lord gets stronger and stronger by the second. 
Joe still holding on to it. Nart getting chunked quite a bit as well. Carl looking for an angle to go in, but now Lunar gets shoved in. Nart going for the implosion as well. Connecting out of two, and Carl did not have the power of nature. That's a good wild charge to disengage now. As Demon Force gets popped in, but Shocker steals the wild charge, and Siggy Boom will still be able to purify out of that head. Hey, Force the flick around, and the Mystic Gush doesn't connect. Xeno Zenith back on the Lord, looking for this first Lord, and it should be an uncontested one, unless Kazoo. He's able to go for the steal. He has the orange buff. He is two levels ahead. He's gonna dash in forward. Nart able to knock him up and shove him back. Shocker doing some damage back, and Nart will still be able to survive. Now Siggy Boom goes in for single vision and there's a mod force. Hey, hey gonna be caught, but the Lord has been slain. Shocker doing some damage. He goes in for the kite as well. Siggy Boom very, very low. Joe walking up, going for the stab, but Siggy Boom is still able to survive. This is actually very dangerous. I feel like Zeno Zenith should have been punished there because they hold on to the Lord for such a long time. S2G could have forced a fight there and then allowing them to take as much damage as they can from the Lord, the additional damage is going to come true and they should have gotten the kill. And looking at the goal difference here, 1.1k gold difference for the goal leaners. Zipin now has the Holy Crystal, so it's not going to be a good time for Karo as well as Lunar where I don't think they can tank the damage anymore. At this point, you don't want frontline the Natan. You want to engage straight onto the Natan, take him down as fast as possible. Now Begin has has his additional item. He has more penetration at this point, the Divine Glaive, but I don't know. I, I'm not so sure how much it's going to help for the next team fight. Yeah, for Xeno Zenith, they've scaled up already. That was that was a good timer, actually, for Zippy to pick up the Holy Crystal. 10 minutes, usually expected in the 11th minute, so he would to beat the clock by one minute, Shocker again, able to steal that wild charge with the IMU. And look at the way that Xeno Zenith are playing with the Lord, slowly but surely building up waves, but it will be crashing down into that top lane. And Begin is actually able to keep it within the distance outside of the turret splash. And they will be able to get rid of it before it actually crashes in. So good job by S2G to fend off for now in the 11th minute of the game. But still, a big problem for them is they're relying on a snowball. We gotta look at the damage dealt here as well. Valentina has the highest 35,000 damage dealt. Harif only 31,000 damage dealt. So it looks like, at least in terms of damage, S2G, they're putting numbers on the board. The Gord as well, doing quite a lot of damage. But, oh, looks like uh, the Grok is gonna frontline a lot of damage. And Xeno Zenith, they're just waiting for Gnar to start things off. Mm -hmm. Carl is just trying to open up the map here with the power of nature. Trying to put those barriers down as well, but Zippy. You mentioned the Holy Crystal, and I gotta agree, man. At this point, it doesn't feel like any of the S2G front lines will be able to handle that damage, especially when you... They'll get bursted you, down. They'll get bursted down, for sure. And especially when you have Hehe there pinning you down for those hits to come through. They're gonna have to somehow be able to go back and forth, finding the window. They gotta wait for the entropy to be used, wait for the entropy to be over, and then instantly engage again. It makes it super hard for S2G going back and forth, layering their CC, but they're already clumping up together. Siggy Boom, oh, before that, Carl uses the conceal, but looks like not going to get Seal. anyone. So, SDG Esport tried to go for an engage, caught no one. We got to talk about the Holy Crystal on the Harif as well, but between both gold laners, it doesn't look like Siggy Boom is actually being more uh, proactive in the fight. It looks like Zippy is going to have the Divine Glaive, so Yikes. he's not worried about getting bursted down. He wants pure damage at this point. That's a very scary Natan in the 13 minute of the game. Blood Wings 2 for Shocker. So should be able to actually play right in front of Zippy even better now. To do a lot of damage on Takaro. Actually forcing out the Athena shield. And it seems for Zippy. Pops into Entropy. Goes in for the rush. And Karo won't really be able to react to this. Appraiser's Wrath right into Retribution. S2G let that happen. Karo, even with the Athena shield, still took that much damage from Zippy. He's practically dealing true damage at this point of the game. Yeah, at this point, Xeno, Zenith, eight kills over to six. I just feel like SDG Esports, personally for me, they got a good draft. They just weren't able to execute. But props to Xeno, Zenith, especially to Shocker. Shocker was able to uh, able to push people away, making it so that they don't engage onto Xeno, Zenith. Man, this, this is rough for S2G, a team very reliant with this composition on an early game snowball. And remember, Ladies and gentlemen, this is an elimination match. If you lose here, you're you're out of the wild card. These are the tournament, or actually the wild card favorites. Oh yeah, everyone was going for S2G, and perhaps that put a little bit too much pressure. Speaking of pressure, Zeno Zenith is not letting down the pressure. They made sure that they get the tier twos of the bottom as well as the mid. So now all they have left is the inhibitors, and Kazoo is getting taken a lot of damage. 
still able to escape though. That was a retribution used by Joe, so at least they can play around with that. But the Enhanced Lord now charges down on that top side base turret. Hehe. <laughs> still has a penalty zone, can decide to go for it, just looking for the timing. They aren't really able to siege it down just yet. Even the minions there not able to go for the base turret in the mid lane. Does seem like with begin. They have some solid wave clear to play with here, LaFell, but there's gonna be another wave coming down on that top side. Still for Xeno Zenith, they'll play it very, very safe. Yeah, it looks like they're not because, again, this is an elimination match. I feel like both teams are aware of the situation. Conceal being used by Caro. They see Joe, they go for it. Wall charge flicker. Joe just gets out. It's a Fredrin. And now with him going out, it seems like he's going to be hit, hit with the penalty zone and the flicker. To lock Lunar down. Still has a flicker as well to get out. No, no, it's an implosion. All to do straight into the entropy. And they won't be able to really hold on to that damage. We mentioned it earlier. The frontliners, not even them could handle it. Especially not begin. And now Kazoo with a fracture desperately on the Joe and Nart. It's still the frontliners taking damage. Zippy is full HP, goes up to Entropy. A little bit of damage, no wall charge to play with. Goes straight for the base right now. His head tries to go for the angle, and now the shove will allow Zippy to go for the last few hits. That's a double kill as Zeno. Zenith knock S2G out of the wild card. And again, SG is one of the favorites, so again, if you guys...